By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to enjoy a match of Unsleeved Magic the Gathering. I've brought my Unsleeved Revised deck to the table. It's red and it's green and I've called it Wildfire and I'm looking forward to show it to you. And I'm taking on Marco, a brand new patron from the US and he's playing a mono black unsleeved deck. Now his deck has some revised cards in there but also some 4th edition and some Chronicles. So I'm really, really looking forward to play against him. I don't play unsleeved all that often so I'm really excited about it. If you enjoy Unsleeved, by the way, check out the description below because there's a nice link to the playlist with all the Unsleeved games played here on Timmy Talks. There are quite a few now, actually. Um, and also, in the description below, you can find a timestamp directly uh, linking to the actual games. I know some people enjoy skipping the deck text, checking it out after the match. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find that timestamp. It uh, reads MTG Games. So click on MTG Games and go straight to the game action. And here I'm going to continue with the deck decks and I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Marco. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Marco and it's actually looking, it's looking pretty good. I like the way this looks, it's uh, mono black. We see some actual rares in there. We've got a demonic tutor, we've got a sorcerer's queen. So that's pretty good. We have a jam day tome for card draw. We've got a disrupting scepter and it's also pretty aggressive, right? That's exactly what you would expect from uh, from black because we see two black knights we see frozen shade which is which is good in a mono black brew we see four uh of those uh, urk raiders i think urk raider what i love is to put an unholy strength on urk raider because it's like it becomes a four four and that just feels good you know it's protected from bolts it, it just wants to attack every turn it's really nice also the juggernaut seem quite strong if you get an unholy strength on a juggernaut you've got a seven four that's really good uh, the Pestilence, ooh man, that's gonna be real nice in this deck. I also love that little synergy between Sengir Vampire and Sorcerer's Queen, by the way. Obviously Sengir Vampire, the 4-4 four, four flyer, that when it kills a creature, it gets a plus one, plus one counter. And with the Sorcerer's Queen, you can make any creature an O2, you know, so that always works together really, really well. So it's looking like a pretty solid list for Unsleeved. I'm a little bit scared, but... You know, let's check out my deck, because I've got some tricks as well. Let's take a look at my deck. It's uh, green, it's red, it's called Wildfire. And here we see my deck, so I've called it Wildfire. It's red and it's green, and the reason I've called it that way is because it's got a play set of Wild Groves, and it wants to, one of the strategies is it just wants to build a huge fireball. Now, I don't have four fireballs. I do have two fireballs and two disintegrate, so that comes pretty close. So I can make like a big fire with my Wild Groves, and my fireballs, and then also I'm playing fire breathing. So it's it's pretty cool, you know. I think this deck is also quite good. The wild growths are really gonna help me ramp up. So it's not just to make a big fireball, but also to kind of get my bigger creatures out early. I'm playing Juggernaut as well, just like Marco. I'm playing a full play set of those. So if I can have a wild growth turn one, then potentially I can have a Juggernaut at turn three, which is real good. Um, of course, I can also have a turn four. Earth Elemental, which is really hard to get rid of because it's got five toughness, so it's a four or five big boy. It could kill one of those pumped up Urg Raiders that we talked earlier about. I've got an Iron Root Tree Folk, three five. Again, that five butt is gonna make it really good. And what I also like in this deck, I've put two Dwarven Warriors in here, and I've obviously I've got some creatures that I can make unblockable, right? I've got the Scripps Brides, I've got the uh, Giant Spider, I've got the Curd Ape, so those creatures I can make unblockable. And obviously I wanna put my Fire Breathing on those creatures. Because the way Dwarven Warriors works is you can make a creature unblockable with power two or less. And after that, you can up their power. So if I, for example, put a Fire Breathing on my Curd Ape, I can make it unblockable. It attacks. And then before it deals damage, I'm going to pump it up with the Fire Breathing, deal some additional points of damage. So that's some kind of like little nice, neat little trick. Now, as you can see, I don't have a lot of flyers. So... I mean, that's a little bit of a concern. So that Sangir Vampire there of my opponent is looking very scary, but then again, he only plays one Sangir, so I'm, I'm fine. Um, I'm also playing a, a Lightning Bolt, which is pretty good against the Sorcerer's Queen. So yeah, you know, I'm pretty confident. I think this is going to be a close match when I'm looking at both the decks and their power levels. Anyway, uh, we've checked out the deck of Marco. We've checked out my deck now here, Wildfire. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we've got Marco on the left, so he's on mono black. I'm sitting on the right, so I'm playing my wildfire deck, green and red. I'm on the play. 
Actually, I'm not. Look at that. I thought it was on the play, but it's Marco starting with a Swamp passing to turn. So I'm going to draw card number eight, I guess. Playing a Forest, tapping. What do we see? A Wild Growth. So this is a really good opener for me. And uh, six cards in hand here, passing to turn, probably back to Marco. Let's see what he can do. Also, six in hand while drawing up to seven now, of course. Can he find, for example, a Black Knight? Nope, just passing to turn here. So he seems to have uh, mana issues very early in the game. Perhaps should have taken a Mulligan. There's a tap for three. There's a Dwarven Warrior. So it's a 1-1 one -one creature. You can tap it to make target creature with power two or less unblockable. So it works really well with my Script Sprites and Curd Apes. Giant Spider is in there as well that I can make unblockable. Passing a turn back to Marco. Let's see what he can do. There's a Felden's Cane, a card originally from Antiquities. You can tap and sack it and you can then shuffle your graveyard back into your uh, library. There's the attack with the Warriors, by the way. Marco on 19. This is a copy from Chronicles. Tapping two green here. What else can I do? There is a script sprite. So one green floating. Tapping that one. So one red, one green. Playing a regeneration on the script sprites. Enchant creature, pay one, regenerate. So really protecting that flyer. We are playing with mana burn, by the way, in these unsleeved matches. There we see Marco tapping two black. There is a black knight. So 2-2 two, two first strike protection from white. Luckily for me, the uh, script, script sprites can fly over. Now I've got four mana. Perhaps I can cast a giant spider or war mouth. That will be really sweet. First attacking here. And Marco going here to 18. And now I'm tapping out completely. Tapping four mana. There's a War Mammoth. So this is a 3-3 three, three Trampler. Ideal here to block the Black Knight. And also to potentially attack with next turn. Let's see what Marco can do. We do know that he plays with four Unholy Strength in his deck. So perhaps he's going to enchant the Knight with that. And he would have a 4-3 First Striker. That would be really good. Tapping a Black. Are we going to see that Strength? Yep. Unholy Strength. So now it's a 4-3 First Striker. That is really good. He's not attacking with it though. So that's a little plus. Probably doesn't want to take the damage from the War Mammoth and the Dwarven Warriors then on the crackback, so deciding not to attack. Tapping something here. Do I have maybe an Iron Root Tree Folk? No, I've got a Stream of Life though. So I'm playing a Stream of Life for four life, I guess. So I'm going to go up to 24. And also attacking Marco for one. So he's going to go down to 17. Two cards in hand, passing to turn. So even though Marco has only found two lands for this entire game, he's still on 17, which is not too bad. And he's got a 4-3 first striker. So this always kind of worries me because there, there will be a certain point in this game where Marco will find the swamps and then he simply has more cards in hand and he could take over the game. But that moment hasn't arrived yet, just drawing a card and passing to turn. So very unfortunate here for Marco, not finding any swamps. There's a mountain from my side. There's an attack here for one again. There's a terror though. And remember with terror, you cannot regenerate. So that is very unfortunate. And now I have to find a way to deal with that knight. Perhaps I've got an Earth Elemental. That would be ideal. There's the Earth Elemental. That is perfect. 4-5. So that can actually attack Marco next turn. It can kill the Black Knight. So this is ideal for me. And Marco's going to draw for turn. Will he find some more lands? Finally finding land number 3. Had to wait a long time. The question now is what can he do with 3 lands? I mean he does play with 1 Sorcerer's Queen. That would be a really good card right now. It would be a big problem for me. He's not doing anything though. So giving me another chance here. Going to go up to two cards in hand. And I'm going to attack first with my Earth Elemental. So four, five. There's a Terror though. Oh, that's unfortunate. Those Terrors are so good. Playing another Wild Growth. So having even more mana. One card in hand passing the turn. 
I could really use like a fireball or a disintegrate to kill the Black Knight. Marco still on 17. I mean, those terrors are so good against my deck. And okay, he's playing a Demonic Tutor. For a moment, I thought, why is he picking up his deck? But he's looking up a Demonic Tutor, going for a basic swamp. Wow, so that's how bad he needs it. Needs the lands. There's an Urk Raiders. So Urk Raiders, only a 2-3 now. So I can kill it with the War Mammoth if he attacks. But remember, he is playing with a lot of Unholy Strength. So if he can put an Unholy Strength on there, it would turn into a 2-3. Ooh, there's a Disintegrate. Probably going to kill the Black Knight with the Disintegrate. And that means I have an option here to attack with the Mammoth. Probably going to chump here, maybe. Although, would you maybe just take three and then attack with the Raiders next turn? Let's see what he's going to do. So, uh, War Mammoth, a 3-3 three, three Trampler. And Urk Raiders, a 2-3 Creature that has to attack every turn. If you don't, you take two points of damage. There we see the Chump by Marco. So, his life total is going to stay high. Still on 17, which is really good. But his board is empty, though. Ooh, there's an Uncle Istvan. This is really good. Uncle Istvan is a 1-3 Creature from the Dark. This is a Chronicles version reprint. And the problem with Uncle Istvan is that all the damage taken by the uncle is reduced to zero. So he can block like the War Mammoth and he's not going to die. The damage dealt by the War Mammoth will be reduced to zero for Uncle Istvan. So it's like a perfect wall here for Marco. And again, it's really good with uh, Unholy Strength. Because then you can make it a 3-4 and you can just attack with it, kill some stuff and it's not going to die. At least not from combat damage. So I can play a Fireball on it. That's going to work. But this is really good for Marco. Now he's also using his Felden's Cane here to uh, shuffle his graveyard back into his library. That means those terror cards are coming right back for him. That is quite good. That's a problem for me. And I only have one card in hand and no way to deal damage to Marco here. And Marco's got four cards in hand. So things are looking up for him despite the fact that he couldn't find lands for the longest of time in this uh, game one. It's going to draw a card for turn there. Or not, he already took a card, I guess. It's a bit muddled, but anyway, he's got four swamps tapped. Yeah, now he's going to take his turn. Okay. Yes, I was passing the turn. He did it on end step. There's a juggernaut. Oh, man. The only good thing about Juggernaut is that I can block it on the War Mammoth. We can just trade it. I mean, that's something. Tapping three here. Okay, there's another Dwarven Warrior. So I can use one Dwarven Warriors now to make the other one unblockable. At least get some points of damage in. But I mean, it's not looking great for me. Still just at one card in hand. Not really doing anything for the longest of time here. Probably got to pass it on to Marco. Who has to attack me with the Juggernaut. So I guess I'm going to block that with the War Mammoth. And trade it. But we'll just have to wait and see. I've got one card in hand. Passing the turn you to Marco. Let's see what he can do. Draw a card for turn. So he's got, I believe, four cards in hand. We see that little white dice that says the cards in his hand. And you see my dice that says one. So I've got one card in hand. Well, you can also see it. But, ooh, this is painful. Drain life for three on my mammoth. This is not good. Also because Marco gains three and kills my blocker for the juggernaut. I mean, this is really bad. There's the attack. Gonna take five. Gonna fall down to 19. This is a big problem for me. I really need to start drawing some good cards now. Tapping a green. Another wild growth is not what I need. I mean, it's nice to have so much mana, especially in a deck with, uh, you know, the fireballs disintegrates. But if you cannot find those, it's not going to help you. Look at this attacking for one now. Yeah, this is not great. Perhaps I should just jump block instead of doing this. But yeah. Whatever, dealing one damage at least to Marco, passing the turn, so he's going to drop to 19. He, of course, gained some life from the drain life. I mean, this is really bad. There's a the swamp. So six swamps, got the juggernaut, got the uncle is fun. 
Oh, look at this double unholy strength. This is gonna hurt. Attacking here for nine points of damage. Dropping to 10. Oh man, this is, this is horrible. I need to find my shatter here to take care of that uh, juggernaut. This is horrible. Also a Bok wreath, by the way. Ah, uh, three, three swamp walker. Oh man, this is so bad. Keep looking at that one card. It's just no good, I guess. I wonder what it is. Maybe just the land. It wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, my opponent Mark and I was going to attack here. I probably have to chump. Tapping one red, it seems. Is it a lightning bolt, perhaps? If it's a bolt, I could double block the juggernaut here with my two dwarves and then play the bolt and kill the juggernaut. That would be ideal here. Yeah, it's a lightning bolt. Okay, so this way I kill the juggernaut. So at least that's a problem fixed, but I still have two problems there on the board. The uncle is fun and the bigger problem, the bog. Three, three. So I still get three damage, dropping to seven. No cards in hand, top deck mode. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah, Marco making a mistake here. Assuming it's his turn again. No, 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 you attack me. Now it's my turn. Finding a Pixies, or sorry, a, a Script Sprites, of course. Our Govian Pixies is another card, but the, the Script Sprites found 1-1 one, one Flyer. This is no good, though. This is no good. There's a Sorcerer's Queen. Doesn't matter much, but it's a good card. You can attack now with both creatures, exactly. Uncle Istvan and the Wrath. Take four points of damage, dropping to three. It's looking very dire here. I think maybe a fireball can save me because I can kill multiple creatures then. I've got a lot of mana. Finding a mountain though. Passing the turn. Can I live one more turn? I think I can. I've got a chump on the bog. And then I take uh, one more point from the uncle. I would drop to two. Unholy strength. So I'm lucky he's putting it here on the bog and not on Uncle Istvan or else I would have been dead already. So he's giving me one more turn. There's a Disrupting Scepter. Go Fireball! Go Fireball! Go Fireball! That's a mountain. That is unfortunate. Dang it. Marco winning it here. So despite that rough start for him with the Lance, he's still winning this game one. Wow, I'm a little bit intimidated by his deck. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So I'm on the play this time after losing the first one. Playing a mountain, passing the turn. Let's see if I can uh, do better than in game one. There's a swamp by Marco, a forest from my side of the battlefield. No wild growth yet though, and just a pass. There's a second swamp. There's a black knight again. The black knight did some pretty good work in, uh, in the first game that we played. There's another mountain. Just a pass though. So not much action from my side. Probably going to take a hit here from the Black Knight. Going to tap two more. Another Black Knight. Ooh, that's tough. I'm going to drop to 18 here. Drawing a card for turn. There is a Mountain tapping four. Iron Root Tree Folk. But that's actually five to cast. So I'm not sure why I'm paying four mana for my Iron, Iron Root Tree Folk. That... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. That is why. Why am I doing this? It would be. It would be de kind of decent for four mana. By the way, it would be a lot more playable. But for some reason, I guess we're not noticing anything. And there's a juggernaut, by the way. That is so silly. That is so silly. Casting it for four. Okay, anyway, I've got five mana now. So I could just take it back and cast it now, but it, yeah, it should be on 14 here. Anyway, let's see what else we can do. Fire breathing on the Iron Root Tree Folk. Okay, that's pretty awesome. I've got a fire breathing tree. That is really good. The question now is I probably don't want to trade it with the Juggernaut. So what am I going to do next turn? Or can I do something else? Playing a Shatter here on the Juggernaut. Doing it in main. 
That is again interesting. I could, oh, because I want to attack with it. Okay, I'm going to attack with it because maybe, you know, now Marco doesn't want to double block, of course, with the Knights. He is going to chump with Wando. I mean, that's a pretty good deal for me. I'm fine with that. Passing to turn here to Marco. So now he does have an attack open with the Knight. Could put me on 16. Let's see what he's going to do. Could go up to five mana. Remember, he's got that one really scary Sanger Vampire in the deck. The card I'm really dreading. There is a tap for two black. A terror. Oh, man. Those terrors have been so good against my deck. We saw it in game one. We're seeing this in game number two. Oh, man. Anyway, there's the attack for two. Going to put me on 16. And actually should be on 12, right? But okay. That's water under the bridge. Going to draw my card for turn. Hopefully I've got another big boy to put on the battlefield. There's a juggernaut now. Okay, 5-3 is pretty good. It can block the Black Knight next turn. Hopefully deal some damage. Let's hope that Marco cannot find an unholy strength, for example. He's going to tap four. Okay, there's the Bach. Three, three Swamp Walker. So he could use that to block the Juggernaut on if he wants to. Kind of trade a Juggernaut for a Bog. Tacking here with the five, three. Yeah, he is going to take the trade. And tapping four again. Another Juggernaut, perhaps. Another one. Okay, so putting pressure on the board. Remember, I'm playing a full play set of Juggernauts in my deck. And I mean, it is five power, you know, if you don't have a way to deal with it, it could get really painful very quickly. So let's see what Marco can do. Only has that one lonely black knight there on the board. Four cards in hand, I believe. Three cards in my hand at the moment. He's going to tap two black, four. There's another box. So again, he can trade them off. That is pretty annoying. I mean, that three toughness, that's a little bit too weak. Tapping another four. Okay, disintegrate on the box, I guess. That is pretty good. So now I can swing in for five. I wonder if Marco's going to chump. He is going to chump. I think I would have kept those Black Knights a little bit longer because it's also so good as a double blocker. Having four power first strike to double block. There's again a blocker, again a bog. Really finding those cards now in, uh, in game number two. Trying to get through with the Juggernaut, but I haven't dealt a single point of damage. Ooh, there's a giant growth. Okay, so saving my Juggernaut here. And I mean, things are looking up to me, or, or looking up for me, I should say, because at a certain point, Marco's going to run out of answers, right? Remember, you cannot play a terror on the Juggernaut because it's non-black, non-artifact creature, so that's great. So I just really want to keep this Juggernaut alive. Sengir Vampire. Okay, I wonder if he wants to trade the Sengir for the Juggernaut. I would be happy with that trade, actually. I mean, I got to attack, so I'm going to attack. Is he going to take five or is he going to trade? Let's see what he's going to do. Now remember, he only has one Sengir Vampire in his entire deck. Okay, he's taking the 5, dropping to 15. I'm on 16. Passing the turn, not doing anything else. Four cards in hand. Four cards as well for Marco now, I believe. Going to go back down to 3. What would be really nice for Marco here? Maybe a Drain Life on the Juggernaut? That would be really good for him. Tapping 3, Sorcerer's Queen. Wow, that is really good. That is really good. So now he's got Sorcerer's Queen and Juggernaut and an Unholy Strength. Oh my. Attacking me for six. Gonna put me on 10. I need to destroy one of these two creatures. Now remember, the Queen still has Summoning Sickness. So at least now I can attack without it being turned into an O2 creature. But this is pretty problematic. Like next turn is gonna be a big problem for me. Okay, tapping four here. Fireball. Okay, probably one on the queen then and one on Marco. 
Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. And there's the attack with the Juggernaut. So I'm going to put Marco here on 9. Okay. So finally kind of getting there with the Juggernaut. Also playing a script Sprites. Passing the turn. The problem here is though I am also on 10. So that is kind of scary that, that Sengir is a 6-5. So he could put me on 4 if I don't chump with my script Sprites. Then I can attack him next turn. Put him on 4. There's a Jam Day Tome. I wonder what Marco's going to do. Another unholy strength. Oh, that is insane. He's going to attack now for eight. It's going to put me on two. I guess two doesn't... It's not... Well, if he has a drain life... Ah, oh, it's scary. It is so scary. Remember, I'm already game down. Going to go down to two, though. Taking the risk. Oh, this is scary. Do I have, maybe if I've got like a Disintegrator or something, you know, I could just attack and then kill him with a Disintegrator or Fireball. Oh, Fire Breathing. This is perfect because I can attack. I think this is game, right? Because I have six and I can pump him three times, deal nine points of damage. Exactly. That's it. Winning here. Game number two, right? Or not. Yep, winning game two. Look at that. Wow, wow, wow. That fire breathing just in the nick of time, though. Oh, but I feel kind of bad, Marco, because I don't know why I played Iron Root Tree Folk for four. I mean, that was just wishful thinking. It would be playable for four mana, though. The only thing I'm happy about is that it does mean we're going to get a game number three, and that's always more fun than a two-game match. So that's something. So I guess we're going to shuffle up again, and we'll catch back up with you in game number three. Game number three. Here we go. Marco on the play. Starting with a Swamp passing the turn. Let's see what I can do. So this is the decider, right? Playing a Forest, tapping the Forest. Are we going to see a Wild Growth? Yes, we are. Okay, Wild Growth. That's good. That's my best uh, turn one play, actually, with this deck. Six in hand, passing the turn. Let's see what Marco can do. Are we going to see another Black Knight? We saw that in, I believe, both the games. No, we don't. Okay, that is really nice. Cutting me some slack here. So now I've got three mana Dwarven Warriors, perhaps. Tapping the Forest for two green Crypt Sprites. And another Wild Growth. Wow, so much mana. So next turn, I could play maybe Earth Elemental. Maybe Iron Root Tree Folk. Maybe Juggernaut. I mean, it would be really, really sweet. Let's first see what Marco can do in his turn three. Finding another Basic Swamp. Can he cast a creature here? Not doing anything yet. Has a few options. Urk Raiders, Black Knight, Sorcerer's Queen, Disrupting Scepter. Okay, that's also one of them. So Disrupting Scepter, an artifact that uh, discards cards. Like he can use it in his turn. You can only use it in sorcery speed, pay three and tap, and then force me to discard a card. At least I can choose what card I want to discard. So that's something. Tacking him for one here. So I'm going to put Marco on 19. Tapping both my lands, four mana, Juggernaut. Okay, this is awesome. This is what I want to do. And hopefully he cannot find an answer for this Juggernaut. And I can ride my way to victory with the Juggernaut. That would be awesome. Paralyzed, though. Oh, that is a, that's a good move. Because basically what Marco is saying is, you know, if you want to use your Juggernaut, and he's also using his Disrupting Scepter. So basically what he's saying, like, if you want to use your Juggernaut, you got to use all your mana to untap it. And then you cannot empty your hand. There's a fourth discard, though, uh, from Marco, by the way, with his Disrupting Scepter. So I'm discarding my Stream of Life. Yeah, this is going to be tough because now I've got to make a difficult decision. I am untapping the Juggernaut here. Really want to deal that damage. I can deal six points together with the sprites here. Put him on 13. But I mean, it's eating up all my mana and I already missed a land drop last turn. Missing a land drop again, it seems. So, I mean, this is not a bad strategy for Marco. Problem for him, though, is that he's quite low already. He's now on 13. And he can take a few more hits. 
He's got five mana now, so that's quite nice for him. Drain Life would be uh, would be also a great card. Yeah, playing a Drain Life here on the Juggernaut. It means he's also going to go up three life, going to go back up. He's now on 16. Does lose, of course, is paralyzed. That's a bit unfortunate for him. But, I mean, you have to do what you have to do. Taking hits of five, you cannot take that... Uh, Take those kind of hits for very long. Finding a forest here, by the way. So now I've got enough mana to potentially cast an Iron Root Tree Folk. Another Wild Grove. Wow. Finding a lot of Wild Groves in these games. So regeneration on my sprites. Attacking with the sprites. So going to put him on 15. I'm passing the turn here to Marco, so I need to find a way to put more pressure on his life total. There's a Vampire Bats. That is really funny. It's an 0-1 flyer, and for one black, you can give it plus 1, plus 0, and you can only do that twice. This is, um, I believe it's in 4th edition. Orig originally a card from Legends. We also see a Bog entering the battlefield, by the way. 3-3 Swamp Walker that we saw in Game 2 as well. It's looking kind of good for Marco. Okay, there's an Iruru Tree Folk. And a Fire Breathing. Okay, that's good. I've got a Fire Breathing Regenerating Script Sprite. So that's really like an impressive Script Sprite. It still only, only does one point of damage though. I don't have a lot of red, by the way. Only one, uh, one red mountain there. Of course, with the Wild Growth on it. So Marco's probably just going to do nothing. Well, force me to discard a card with the Scepter, I guess. Only one card in hand. Or does he have something better to do? Okay, using the Scepter. He's got two cards in hand still, I believe. Ooh, look at that. Forcing me to discard a Disintegrate. That is painful. That is painful. Such a good card. Losing it here to the Scepter. And the problem, of course, with Disrupting Scepter now that I'm in top decking mode, I have to kind of keep playing out what I draw into. Attacking with the sprites here. I guess I don't want to attack with also the Tree Folk because then he can double block. And, you know, I have to... He's going to kill my Tree Folk. Okay, blocking here on the Vampire Bats. So that, that's good. So regenerating my script sprites here, taking one point of mana burn. Although I think I could put on a double regeneration shield now that I'm looking back at it. So taking a point of damage that's not really that necessary. And another point of damage for casting my Dwarven Warriors. I mean, that's a downside with Wild Grove if you're playing a format with mana burn, that it's harder to kind of get the right amount of mana. So now I've got that combo, right? Where I've got Dwarven Warriors with a 1-1 one, one creature with Fire Breathing on it. So that's kind of nice. Oh, no. This is... Oh, this is really bad. Look at that. Oh, this is so bad. Pestilence for one damage. You can kill two of my creatures. Oh, no. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. Oh, yuck. This is really bad. And Marco just keeps coming back. Every time I feel like I kind of got the upper hand, he comes back. This Pestilence is just brilliant. Killing two of my creatures. Four of my permanents. Attacking now with my 3-5. Going to go through my graveyard, even though I don't have any graveyard recursion in my deck, by the way. Look at this. Marco doing a jump. This surprises me. I would have expected him just to take the three. Doing a jump, though. Maybe because he wants to use his Pestilence anyway and get rid of my Tree Folk? That's something he could do. He would deal 5 to both of us. He would drop to 8. I would drop to 12. That would make sense because then you're going to jump because you're going to lose the Bog anyway. He could wait, of course, until it's my turn. Yeah, he's passing the turn here. Attacking here. Are we now going to see the Pestilence activation? Yeah, going to use it for five. So we're both taking five. I'm going to lose my creature. 
playing a forest and passing the turn here. So I'm not really finding anything useful, by the way, but I guess I don't want to play out another creature because then the Pestilence stays alive as well. Wonder what I have in hand. Marco's probably going to use his Scepter. Look at the amount of lands he's got. He's got enough mana to do, like, end the Scepter and do something else. Yeah, using the Scepter here. Yeah, losing a land. I'm a little bit land flooded at the moment. He's passing the turn back to me. There's another forest. And actually, when looking at this list, I'm playing a lot of lands. I think I'm playing 24 lands. So I should probably try to find some other revised cards to put in here. I've got this little box of beat up cards. So maybe go through that again, see if I can find, uh, take two lands out, put something else in. Anyway, playing a uh, Juggernaut here. That's pretty good. If this stays unanswered, I mean, Marco's on a two turn clock now. Things are looking up. Well, things were looking up. There's a drain life. <laughs> that drain life is also so good because it works both ways. He kills a creature and he gains life, you know. I think it's going to go back up to 11. He was on 8, right? So he's going to he drain me, drain my creature for 3. So he's going to go up to 11, I believe. Yeah, exactly. Stone Rain, not really that impressive at this stage in the game. Also against a monocolor deck, it's quite bad in this format because you don't have you don't often see cards like Mishra's Factory or something there's a Bokrath 3-3 three, three Swamp Walker or I guess you should say Bok Wreath but it's a problem for me I mean I'm, I'm top decking not really great cards I mean I've top decked three lands in a row and I think a Stone Rain so that's really bad. Unholy Strength. Oh, man. This is painful. Attacking me for five. Or not. Yeah, so attacking me for five and use the Scepter. Look at the card I'm losing. Another land. There's a mountain. Passing the turn. So I've got one more turn. He's going to put me on two. I'm on two. I need the card now. Fireball, fireball, fireball. Wild growth. Wild growth. I mean, Marco, congratulations. And I think you've earned it. Also considering... Okay, so the, the cards were coming. You know, the Juggernaut could have helped. But um, what I wanted to say is congratulations, Marco, on winning this. And I think it's fair enough. You actually beat me 3-0 because the second game... Anyway, let's not talk about that anymore. What I've learned from this match is... A, Iron Root Tree Folk has a casting cost of 5. And B, I need to take some lands out of this deck and I need to put some other creatures in. Let me know in the comments below what creature would you put in. And please, uh, it should be revised. It has to be a common or an uncommon because I don't have all the cards. For for example, I don't have a beat up Dragon Whelp to put in the deck, which I think would be a really good card in this deck. But I, I, I don't have a beat up one to put in this in this type of deck. Anyway... Uh, thank you very much for watching. Also, thank you, Marco, for playing a game. And uh, thank you also for supporting the channel as a patron. Would you also like to support the channel as a patron like Marco? Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks for all the ins and outs. And you can already start supporting the channel with $1 a month. And for that support, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the
Tumba Kazik! 